Welcome to this uh, e-drilling webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Morten Svensson uh, from e-drilling. My co-host today are uh, Mr. Justver Wessel from Mersk Training and uh, Mr. Laurie Scott from Wintershaw. Uh, today's theme is uh, drilling, time is money. First, some practical information. You have all joined uh, in this webinar in uh, listen-only mode. Uh, but in your uh, GoToWebinar application, there is a question, uh, a box where you can write questions. And we will try to uh, have a Q&A in the end of the uh, webinar where we can answer all your questions. When you leave the webinar, our feedback form will be opened. Uh, so uh, we hope that you can take your time to answer the, the questions there. So the agenda for today will be uh, some part of the life cycle simulations. We will look at the winter shell experience and challenges. challenges. Uh, we will look at the most training roles and responsibilities the integration, use and communication, the value added, and in the end, the Q&A. So let's start with the life cycle simulations. The e-drilling concept of using our physical models in different parts of the operation. If you look at the, at the slide, you have this wheel showing the planning, training, operation and after action reviews. We use the same physical models for all parts of uh, in uh, all different parts of the uh, life cycle. Um, in the planning phase we run what if simulations, dynamic planning and post well analysis. We also have a drilling simulator where we do team training, test new technology, Procedure verification, uh, where we also have the advanced 3D downhole visualization. In the operations, we have the advanced monitoring service, where we do real time modeling uh, connected to the real time data on the rig. We do forward looking, what if simu uh, simulations, and we use it for decision support, diagnostics, and also here we use the advanced 3D downhole visualization. And on the left side, you see the different products used, where you have the well planner, which is the planning tool. You have the well sim interact and the well sim and the well sim essentials, which is of different types of simulators for training uh, on crews and also on engineers. We have the well ahead, which is the real time decision support tool. And you have the WellWiz and the WellWiz 3D, which is the plotting tool and the 3D downhole visualization tool. So, over to Laurie. Yeah, I'm going to try and give you a, a flavor of what we saw as major challenges up front and uh, some experiences from what we did together with uh, MERS training and e-drilling. This, uh, this is a semi-submersible rig. We, we share the rig in a consortium with uh, Lundin and uh, VNG. We, we've done a lot of good work with the rig contractor and the contract portfolio in the, the years, or two years leading up to this. So we, we knew each other well, and we've had a lot of good performance, both from the rig and the contractors. So you can see during the, from the slide up here, we, during delivery we had so we did have some non-productive time almost eight days three days for example was a, a misrun with a wear bushing we had a, an MWD round trip we had a, a wireline tool we had the round trip we, we had some noise non-productive time things that nothing that would compromise us achieving our objectives so all in all we were very happy with that but we we took this rig to Halton Bank and just after Christmas, and we operated during January, February, March, and a little bit into April. Lots and lots of weather, which, of course, costs uh, time, but it also adds risk to the operation because we have to suspend the well, we have to disconnect, and we basically can't start anything until we were absolutely sure that we could finish it. We have 
we're pushing the, the rig to its limits with logistically with bulk and variable deck load and so on. So we 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 had to be very conscious of managing that side of the business. When we the purpose of this webinar is to focus on how we how we manage the downhole risks, and we had a a very challenging 26 inch section. We drilled that with a riseless mud recovery system. So we we had a big heavy 20 inch string that we had to run, and then foam cement back to surface. We didn't want to exceed any limitations there. We also uh, in the 75 inch section we we pushed that very deep because we wanted to get the 13 3 8s into brig and into the brig formation, but what, the main risk in that section is to not go too high on the mud weight. We drilled it with all base mud. You can see maybe from the plot as well we had uh, some significant weighting on weather where we had to disconnect. So we need to keep the hole in good conditions. Lots of reactive clays in there, and then when we come to do the cement job, we don't want to exceed the formation strength because. The biggest problem there is that we lose the section and we have to re-drill it. That's something that's happened in the area before. We then move into the 12 and a quarter section. Just below the 1338 shoe, we have the Nis and the Kutnos formations. They're notoriously weak formations. They have limestone beds in them. And if you if you challenge them and you start to lose them, you give yourself big problems when you drill the, the remainder of the 12 and a quarter section, and especially when you run casing and cement. So lots of weak formations below the shoe, the 33 shoe we had to take care of. And we also had to have a lot of focus on our running speeds when we ran the 978s casing and the, the cement job that, that came after that. All, all these sections are about not exceeding limitations. We, we have a, a model up front that we spend a lot of time and effort developing, poor pressure, fracture gradient, minimum horizontal, horizontal stress, all, all the usual stuff. But of course, we have to react to what we actually see. So throughout this, we're using real-time pore pressure prediction, and we're, we're accumulating a massive amount of information from lots of different directions, from mud company, from directional drilling company, from e-drilling, and we're, we're trying to make decisions based on, on what we see. We also then move into the, the reservoir section. We had a, we had a low-pressure scenario here. We're right on a, a fault boundary that defines the, the high pressure zone and the, the normal pressure zone in Halton Banking. And we, we didn't know what we were going to find. There's didn't matter what work we did up front, we we couldn't reduce the uncertainty of what the low pressure and the high pressure would be. So it was, it was either going to be normal pressure or it was going to be 400 bar over normal pressure. And that, that was a, a risk that we had to we had to be prepared for. But the I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but the, the biggest challenge that we saw was we we couldn't start anything unless we were absolutely sure that we could finish it. And we, we always had to have a very clear picture of what our limitations for any of the operations were to take us to into the goal. And the challenge was to find something that would allow us to see what the the, the big picture was and make decisions based on that. And the, the biggest uncertainty has we 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 don't know until we drill it what the real pore pressure and the real fracture gradients are. And that was this is where we spent a lot of time and effort thinking how we what tool can we use to present this to ourselves to allow us to make the right decisions as we as we go along. And we we selected this tool from uh, e-drilling. We, we'd already, in, you go to the next slide. We'd already involved MERSC training and all the HPHT training that we'd done before the well with all the six crews, and uh, writing and or helping us to verify the HPHT procedures. And this software had already been used in the simulator where we, we trained the crews. So we, the next stage was to use it in the actual execution. And we, the experience they had, about, the, the biggest opportunity was to make sure the 1338s was run to depth and cemented according to the objectives. And we managed to do that. The biggest, the biggest risk there is, is, is having to respud or drill a side track if we don't get the, 
the integrity we need in a 33 cement job. And the, the 978s, or the tw firstly drilling in the 12 and a quarter section, we, we want it to avoid ballooning or well bore breathing. We managed to avoid that completely. And we want to cement without losses. And we managed that. That's a, a slight modification of the truth, but we, <laughs> we managed that. And that allowed us, when we came to abandoning the well, to not have to perf and wash, because we had potential hydrocarbon bearing zones both in the leasing and the Langa sandstones. Most in, the most important part of this experience was that every day we were able to accumulate all this information, process this information, and present it to ourselves so we could understand what the risk picture was for the next 24 hours, the next 48 hours, to take us to the end of that particular operation. And that was that was invaluable because there, there's an awful lot of information flying about. There's a lot of noise, and to process it and make sense of it, to allow us to make decisions is a is a big challenge in this business. We also had a very clear expectation with e drilling that they they weren't just there to provide us with fancy presentations or fancy reports. What what we expected was that they would they would make QA, QC simulations, and they would also come with recommendations, opinions, solutions, and that they were part of the team. They were, they were, we ended up in a, in a situation where we, were, we had someone we could play ball with, that we could share ideas with, challenge each other, and allow, allow us to make the right decision to go forward. We, they became part of our team. And that, that was invaluable because it helped us to to react to what we were seeing. The biggest challenge for engineers is they, they make up their mind beforehand and subsurface disciplines. You spend maybe two, three years putting your heart and soul into something and as soon as you as soon as you start to drill it's completely different from what you've uh, what you've predicted. So you need to have a have a team that can react to what you're seeing and make decisions. And that that, that worked very well. One of the things, of course, that it didn't do is when we when we drilled the reservoir section into the what turned out to be the H, HPHT section is we we couldn't predict what the actual reservoir pressure was going to be, but we we could see that when we were drilling into the pore pressure, there's a sharp pore pressure buildup just before we commit to set the 978's casing, and we could see from that that we were going to end up in something potentially. In the high zone, but of course, there's nothing crystal that comes out of that. And so, in, in summary, we we were getting quality thought through look aheads and what if scenarios that we were able to use to make decisions based on. Yeah. Yes. Oh well. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the immersed training roles and responsibilities in this delivery. And um, first and foremost, um, we were the focal point for the communication between the operation to the vintage hall and uh, the e drilling uh, operators. And also, we were part of giving an operational guidance and advice to the operation whenever needed and the support. And uh, to back up a bit on Lori, to have someone to play ball with. Um, is sometimes quite valuable in order to make the best decisions moving forward. Um, and also a um, significant part of our work was to do an operational interpretation of the model results because at the end of the day a model result um, is only a numerical values. So our part of the, the task was also to actually look at the numbers and, and give an advice based on that and give them a or at least a few options to choose from um, and weighting them a bit. Um, as this is a simulator and it's a computer based model um, fed from the real time data from the rig, uh, it also depending on a lot of the input data which can't automatically be fed into it, which we manually had to do. Um, and the, the input and the output correlates if so if you put wrong numbers in you get a non wrong number out as easy as that so 
we had a significant part of actually make sure that the input data given to the model was correct. And lastly, um, as according to Laurie as well, uh, we were given the freedom or the task to research and explore the well-boundary conditions because managing the ECD uh, throughout this well section to make sure that we deliver a well on time and within the operational window was quite crucial for the overall perspective of the well. Um, the following slides uh, I will elaborate a bit on our delivery. The primary objective was to deliver an online risk register based on the USA experience, which was the previously HPHT well drilled for the winter show. Um, a number of offset wells, uh, which we could interpret into the um, into the IMSA well. And um, then based on the anticipated risks um, regards to the IMSA and their pro projected prognosis. Um, this was continuously updated in the WellWIS and um, we looked at situations like losses, cementing, running in hole, uh, close to the fracture gradient in the tweet nose and the Nisa formation sandstones, uh, or sorry, Nisa formations. Um, also keep track of the reported pore pressures and the fracture gradients was quite important. And then get these included and displayed in a, in a readable manner for the operation. Um, and lastly, if there was any potential gains, that should also be uh, included into the reports. The, um, the setup was, was based on, on a 3D visualization where actually we're displaying the well as drilled or as planned, and then updating it with the data and the information as drilled. Our secondary objective was to use the sophisticated hydraulic uh, flow models to calculate the important EZD and the ESD values um, and the combined hydraulic pressure distribution into the well. And there are a few occasions where this became quite important and in particular with the mentioned formations where the, um, the fracture gradient was lower than, than the, the one you see in the casing shoe and where the operation had to take care of these formations in order to make sure that we didn't end up in a loss situation. Uh, we used the dynamic calculations to assist the, or could assist in the any well incidents, like the loss and the gain scenarios. Um, what if simulations can be done on hoc, ad hoc, where the what if simulations, is, as again, is driven by the real time data, but we, we park the simulation and we, on the side, we do a what if simulation, what will happen if we change a parameter, what will happen to the ECD values and the ESD values. Um, and obviously run the kick modeling in order to verify the sufficient kick margin. Uh, we have a few examples where in particular we go into the lower part of the 12 and a quarter inch section where the uh, pore pressure actually was um, significantly higher than the estimated one. Um, and all of a sudden we had to look at the kick modeling to see are we able to safely handle a kick in the section? Um, and uh, we had to reduce the, the kick model or the kick uh, margin in order to, to do this. And that had to be included into the planning and the operation as well. Um, as a last part of the secondary objective was to verify the model ability in the HPHT drilling, uh, which it seems like it actually did. The tertiary object, objective for us was to assist the vintage hull uh, onshore and the offshore team uh, if needed, um, since we had all the relevant data stored and available uh, whenever they needed it. Um, we could also help them out with reviewing the strategy moving forward. Um, since we have an operational background, we also assisted a bit in the drilling best practice if needed and suggest improvements on the drilling strategy, the operational strategy, and efficiency strategy. And then lastly, to find relevant learning points to include in the future projects. <coughs> so, what we delivered, we delivered 61 days onto the wall. Um, we generated 44 daily reports. The mismatch between the 61 and the 44 is due, largely due to the weight on weather. Um, Meters drilled, uh, 3,077. 
We performed 23 simulations in 14 different reports for the risk analysis ahead and for the next operation. Uh, we performed five simulation and uh, kick simulations, uh, largely due to the um, due to the rapid pore pressure increase in the lower part of the 12 and a quarter inch section. And the three what if simulations were performed. All these simulations were performed in actually to make sure that Wintershall had a um, a good overview of the risks associated with actually drilling the well and the operation in a proactively manner. The integration with the operation. Um, we use the well ahead and the well planner to optimize the well delivery. The real-time monitoring and diagnosis with the well ahead, uh, where we compare the sensor data with the simulated data, uh, typically ECD and standby pressure for ECD management. Uh, at one point during the well, um, the, um, the mud provider's ECD calculations were two points off. Um, and in this environment, where you have a very narrow window between the pore pressure and the fracture gradient, Wintage will be actually debating of pulling out, replacing the PWD sensor, uh, since there was a mismatch, um, whereby they actually looked at the uh, ECD that we calculated on their behalf. They realized that we were spot on with the PWD reading, which gave Wintage all the confidence and continue and drill the well to TD. Um, we produced a real-time view in three dimensions for the overall understanding and as a platform for a cross-discipline collaboration within Wintershall and also with ourselves. Um, we did a, a several what-if and automatic forward-looking simulations on, based on the ECD and the important value of the ECD. Um, the daily 24-hour forecast with a well planner um, that's where we verified the risk picture and uh, looked ahead in time, being a proactive partner in this. Um, and the risk matrix was continuously updated with experiences along the well path. The um, simulation of the next operation um, was sometimes difficult due to the weather, uh, <coughs> uh, which all of a sudden came up, uh, even though we have a good weather forecast. Sometimes we we uh, had to do a what-if simulation and make sure that we're able to get out of the hole properly. The um, use and communication. Um, by Wintershall, we were actually used uh, quite proactively. Um, we were trying to look ahead of time, trying to plan for, for the future rather than situation and try to avoid uh, situations uh, emerging. Uh, we were given a lot of empowerment by Wintershall and Laurie and his team. Um, but obviously in a situation like this, the communication is a critical key element uh, where we had a short communication line between me, myself and Laurie. Um, if needed, uh, we have the daily meetings where the um, our simulations and the report generated was discussed with the potential solutions and recommendations. And uh, within the winter shell, there was an effective discussions um, or discussion lines and short uh, communication or sorry, uh, decision time frames. Mm. Yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, the winter shell golden rule uh, for your communication was you tell me philosophy. And um, from being on the other side, that gave Merce Training and E-Drilling an ownership to what we were doing and uh, to our delivery for the well. Um, it made sure that the overall common goal was distribu distributed evenly between all the parties. And um, we optimized the use of the resources in order to make sure that we were able to deliver that. So... On that note, I'm going to leave the word back to you, Laurie. Yeah, for the biggest part, the biggest thing for us was we we we're creating an awful lot of data. Or we have a, a lot of different tools where this data is being processed and presented, and sometimes it's a challenge to to sew it all together. 
to to allow us to make decisions. We have uh, mud companies, was Halliburton, Baker's the directional co- drilling company. We have pore pressure specialists. We have our own subsurface group, and this this tool managed to to tie it all together, and it, it was. It was done in a, a way where we could trust it as well, because we, we could see that the people who were doing it had invested a lot of their their own time and their own knowledge to make sure that what, what they were presenting to us they could stand behind, and they, they'd verified it themselves. That that was a that was a a big a big plus for us. It also allowed us to to make sure that we could. We could get right to the end. We, we were never going to drive ourselves into a corner where, for example, we say the weather's coming up. Have we got enough time to get out of the hole? Do we have the window we need to run this casing and not go on losses and complete the cement job without losing? Just allowed us to go through the whole process and simulate it and verify it to ourselves that we our plan was robust and we could complete the plan. It also, it also helped us to highlight the risk to the, I don't like calling them the offshore team because we, we're, we're one team onshore and offshore, but we, we were able to clearly communicate, for example, the risk of these limestone beds in Nice and Quitnos, just how critical it was. Even when you're running 978's casing inside the 338's casing, and you're, you, you, you have the, the nose of the the casing just below the seabed, that if you run too fast, you are going to break down the formation. So it was a very good communication tool for that. It was also, if you have two things that are giving you the same answer, it's great. If you have three things that are giving you the same answer, even better. And we had that with the, the real-time mud density simulations, the actual measurements from the downhole tools and the, the e-drilling software. But if one of them dropped out, or if one of them, for example, was giving us spurious values after waiting on weather for five, six days, which the the simulation did at one point, then we have two that we can rely on, and we can go ahead knowing that we, we're using good information. But the, the most important part of it was was the, the value of having a team that could challenge us and help us to make sure that we were making the right decisions, because they understood, they understood the goals, they understood the objectives, they were part of the planning process, and they, they understood what we needed to do to achieve our objectives. So that, that was a that was a very positive positive point for us. We had uh, 37 days waiting on weather and eight days of non-productive time, and we still managed to come in. Uh, come in on time and on budget and achieve all our objectives. Okay. Thank you for listening in. Uh, now we have time to take questions. So you can use the question field in the go to uh, webinar uh, application. Uh, I have also uploaded uh, handouts for you, so there is uh, one case study of this particular case and also the presentation that we have showed. Uh, we have some questions already, so we could start with those. Yes, the first question. I see the application of the e-drilling software as a good tool for operators and not drilling contractor. Is there a value for the drilling contractor can draw out of this? Maybe you just, uh, can answer that? Yes. Um, I understand that. Uh, the thing with this presentation is that this is for the MSA experience based on the delivery we did for an operator. However, uh, looking at the current market, uh, where the drilling contractors are constantly being pushed on more liability for the wells, where the the contracts will be changing, um, and the the margins are less, 
I think it's um, utterly important that the drilling contractors get on the same page as the operators in order to make sure that they make the right decisions and that the drilling contractors also have the same information as the oil companies. So um, looking forward and looking into the into the um, magic ball, um, I think that several drilling contractors will start looking into it and utilizing it both for their normal operations in order as an optimization tool, but also a bit of a tool to assist them in making the the best possible decisions moving forward in order to reach the, the overall goal. And that question, uh, what is Musk's involvement in e drilling? <laughs> so well, Musk uh, training is a partner of e drilling and is providing this as a service. Yes. Uh, we have a long several years uh, working together on training simulators and training and uh, now we are also in partnering in real-time operations and decision support yes so let's see if there's any other questions uh, how did the software de-risk achieving top of cement objectives? Was it all about tuning the ECD of the cement job to the real pore pressure and factor gradient measured during drilling? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We, we our, our philosophy or our strategy was to listen to the whole and not not exceed the limitations that we, we saw during drilling. And specifically the nine, both the 338s and the 978 cement jobs, that the ECD limitation that we set for ourselves was based on what we'd what we'd seen. Yeah. Okay. Next question: How does this product differentiate itself from the likes of Halliburton's well plan, where wells can be planned in depth? in advance and real-time data fed into it for comparing parameters with models. There is a lot of um, similarities to well plan, between the well planner and the well plan. Uh, but the well planner is not as, doesn't have as many module, modules as well plan. Uh, it's easier to compare it to other tools like Drillbench, maybe. Uh, so, but we have it's dynamic modeling. So all your hydraulics is modeled in a dynamic way. So you will be able to figure out your kick tolerance in a dynamic model instead of a steady kind of an Excel sheet or easy formula. Mm. Uh, and the modeling of the hydraulics is combined with uh, temperature modeling as well. So you will have the, both the temperature, but also the time factor as a dynamics in the modeling. Uh, that, was, that was one of the things that gave us a more clearer understanding of what our limitations were because it takes into account the temperature effects. Mm. Uh, and, and the other thing is that you, we also, it's the same models that is run even though you are running it in, uh, in the planning phase or in the real-time monitoring phase. So, so we kind of, we, we, we know that our models are good in real-time and we know then that they should be good for planning as well. Because you, as long as you give them the same input, they should, is giving you the same output. We know that a lot, lot of other vendors, they do different models for different parts of the operation. But we use the same hydraulic modeling on all parts of it. Yeah. How were other third-party real-time solutions used? Uh, Baker Hughes, Halliburton, do, did they align with eDrilling? So we got the real-time data from... Yeah, all the... Lots of surface and downhole measurements from Baker Hughes and uh, the mud company is uh, Halliburton Bayroid. So they, they're doing the, the static or the, the downhole density modelling. 
but they, all, all the parameters that we were getting from Baker Hughes, they went straight into this e-drilling system and we can compare the two of them. It, it's You're not comparing uh, apples with apples, they're different things, eh? Yeah. And I think a lot of the simula- or the calculated values that came out of the e-drilling system, it filled in some of the holes that we weren't getting from the, the standard mud, mud logging package. Yeah, uh, where do you see e drilling in combination with Sitecom from Kongsberg? Yeah, uh, Sitecom um, is basically a, a real time data server which provides uh, really good uh, storage of the real-time data and a really good user interface for it. The big difference there is eDrilling does real-time modeling on the data, and you are able to model a bit more data than you will get in the real life. Uh, in, but in combination with Sitecom, there is kind of two ways of combining it. One thing is to use Sitecom to feed data to e-drilling or on the other side is to implement the models in the Sitecom system which could be a solution. Yeah, I can I can take that. Yeah. Estimated and actual costs were very close. How did e-drill help achieve that? We We, our whole philosophy was to not exceed any limitations during well construction. Talking about fracture gradient specifically, and we, we managed to to map what we had, and we managed to do the cement or the casing running and cement jobs without exceeding the limitations. So we, we didn't have any surprises down there. Our, our cement jobs fulfilled all the objectives, and when we cut the casing, there was nothing to come back. So that's the, that's the biggest, we had no downtime during the abandonment at all. And traditionally in this area, lots of these wells use 25% of the well time during the abandonment phase because they have, they have to do, they have to deal with hundreds of cubes of mud that comes back, they have to do, they have to cut and pull casing and open hole, they have to do perf and wash. There's all kinds of remedial work that needs to be done. So I think the, the biggest contribution that was made was that we were able to see what our limitations were during well construction and not exceed them. Okay, that was the last question for now. Um, should we hang in there for another minute to see if... Yeah, there's a question. Um, a guy I missed the start, how many wells? Uh, and for this case it was one... Yeah, this is just a one-off exploration well. HPHT exploration well. Yeah. But if you if you think about how many wells we have been running on in total, uh, I, I'm not quite sure about the number, but we, if we look at the training simulator here, we have been training over 2,000 people with this downhole modeling uh, and it's more than a hundred different wells that we have been simulated. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Another question. Will Wintershall use this for any other well or just HPHD exploration where planning times are longer? I don't, I don't think the planning time really drives the use of this tool, it's the application. And it, if if it's an application where there's a, I'm going to drive the price up here if I answer this question properly. If if we see it's an application where we have slim margins and we can anything we can do to make it easier to see what these margins actually are during well construction, I I would use this. Oh. Yeah. Okay, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, yeah, there's a new question. 
how much does this cost Wintershall compared to the savings? We we had that on the mirror, so well we lost. It was over six days when we cut the nine seven eights casing, which is in Norwegian krona it was something like 160 million krona. And this service cost us maybe two and a half million krona. But don't tell e drilling that. <laughs> It's, it's, it's just that you don't want to get yourself in, into the situation where you're going to have to start throwing lots of money at fixing problems that you can avoid. Okay. Um, please visit our webpage, edrilling.no, if you want to find out something more. And uh, thank you again for joining us. And thank you, Just and uh, Lori, for... Uh, bringing this together. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Have a nice day.